Hey, howdy, hey, welcome to you, welcome back to my channel. For tonight's video, we are going to be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 14, Episode 12. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below what you thought about this episode, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, come join the Sandwich Hour community. And without further ado, let's get this video started. <laughs> So before we do get into this video, I do just want to say this was honestly one of my favorite episodes that we've had this season. I thought it was a phenomenal episode, if I'm being real with y'all. From top to bottom, I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a great musical challenge. I love a good musical. I'm definitely a theater gay. So again, of course, I will love a musical challenge. And I thought this was a great musical. Honestly, it was one of my favorites that we've had in a decent amount of time. Um, so yeah, let's get right on into it. Um, obviously the episode starts out with the Queens coming back in after Jasmine's elimination. Well, it's the next day and they're coming in finding her message. Um, it's a cute moment. They're talking about Jasmine. There's some drama, of course, with Daya. Daya's like, oh, of course she didn't include me in her letter, blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of just like, at this point, it just feels unnecessary to me. Um, but at the same time, I am happy that Bosco was still here to stay this week. Again, I love Bosco, so it was really great for that. Um, honestly, they're mostly just more reflecting on the fact that they all survived, made it through. They're tired, but they're still pumping. We are getting very far into this season, and it, it's a doozy this week, I will say. Um, but that happens. Then they get around the table again. You get the same judge you get every week. RuPaul comes in and introduces the Maxi Challenge, where the queens are going to have to be performing in the Rusical Challenge, which is going to be the Moulin Rouge, of course, inspired by Moulin Rouge. I thought this was a really cute challenge. I loved it. Um, the one thing I will say is I do wish they had to record vocals, because I thought that could have added another element, which I do feel like we were missing. Again, for a Rusical, I really enjoy having the vocals aspect, but that being said, I still really enjoyed it. So RuPaul comes in, introduces the musical, tell them they're going to have a special guest director, um, tell them that they're also going to all have to assign uh, roles, there's no one in charge, so of course, that's kind of the vibe, the vibe of it all. So then they get on the sofa, start assigning roles and all the above. Alright, so when it comes to the roles, obviously there are the four um, performers in the Moulin Rouge. Charisma, Uniqueness, Nerve, and Talent. Right off the bat, Daya is like, I want uniqueness. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. And Daya is very, very much sticking her foot in every single week. And I feel like this is another example of it. Where as you have other queens who are much more accommodating to everyone else. And it gets a little frustrating for me as a viewer when I see someone being so... Again, I mean, it is a competition. So, I mean, I have to give Daya that. Like, it's a competition. And she is sticking to her gun. So, i got to give her some respect for that. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't really love this moment for you, Daya. Anyways, Daya is going to be uniqueness. Nerve is going to be Deja Sky. Um, charisma. Alright, so first for talent, Angeria and... Um, and Georgia is both want talent. And of course, Angeria ends up stepping up and being like, alright, I'll take charisma, you can have talent. So we have the four there. And then Green Fairy is going to go to Willow. There's not too much competition for that role. And then of course we get the other two roles being Saltine and, um, Lady Z. So, for these two roles, obviously Camden and Bosco both really want the a uh, saltine roll. When it comes to this, there's they end up voting for it all, and I'm. I feel like Bosco is being really rude with it. Um, again, maybe I'm taking Camden's side myself too much here. I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. But it, also in the end, in and Tuck Bosco acknowledges that. But <laughs> they end up voting, of course, all the other queens. It ultimately does come down to Willow Pill to tie the vote. To break the tie. 
And the role of Saltine does ultimately end up going to Bosco, which means that um, Lady Camden gets the Bearded Queen role. And Lady Camden was not super happy about this. Both Bosco and Camden kind of went off on their own and were both pretty upset about this entire experience. Um, and I get it, but also I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's a big role, and I think that was a big part of it. So, I don't know. And also, it, if I'm looking at it from Bosco's perspective, wouldn't it have been smarter to take a smaller role after having some difficulties with Snatch Game and also being in the um, Lollapurza waiting until the last round, being knocked out until the last round to win, right? Again, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. But ultimately, the role of Saltine goes to Bosco. Then they go off and start prepping in on everything. There's a moment I want to talk about between Angeria and Camden because both of them are not super thrilled with the roles that they got. And Angie really comes in and really helps out uh, Camden. And I love this moment. I love the friendship that is developing developing between Lady Camden and Angeria. It is so endearing. I love both of them together. Um, and then, of course, we have... Daya, who's talking to Bosco and being like, hey, you stood your ground, you did what you needed to do. And Willow's there too, again. I love Willow. And I was a little, not thrilled to see them there. So, I mean, I guess it's fine, ultimately, because, like, I still love Bosco. But in that whole moment, I was definitely more on Team Camden. <laughs> so that was a little bit, you know, it, it is what it is. Anyways, so now we get to Choreo. Of course, the special guest director is going to be and of course, the extra special guest director is going to be Leslie Jordan with choreo uh, with the lyrics written by Leland. Then we have the choreographer coming in, and they kind of just run them all through choreo. When it comes to choreo moments, um, Bosco is picking it up pretty quickly. Uh, Camden's picking it up really, very quickly because Camden has ballet experience. And then, of course, we have um, queens like Angie, who's not the best when it comes to choreography, and also. We have Georges, who I would expect to do really well, but it seems like Georges is much more better at, like, in-the-moment type choreo as opposed to planned-out choreo. So, I think Georges does ultimately make it work, but, again, that's how it happens. They don't really show Willow doing very much, and they don't show Deja, like, at all. And also, they don't really show Daya either. So, that's a whole moment. Then we get to the next day, they're all getting ready. Honestly, I kind of want to skip to the musical because this is where my real opinions lie. Um, overall, I really, really, really enjoyed this musical, if I'm being real with y'all. Like, I thought it was a great musical. I had so much fun watching it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through all the characters and my critiques and all the above. Let's start with Charisma, which of course is going to be Angeria. When it comes to the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent roles, it kind of faded into the background. And that was the part where I was nervous for Angie. Because I feel like Angie did, tried her best to stand out f in between the four of them. But all of those roles really faded into the background. So I, I think Angie made the best of it. But I don't necessarily think... I don't know. It was fine. Again, it's kind of hard to critique these roles because they were such small roles. It's kind of hard... For me to like, you know, there's not too much to really talk about. Then when it comes to uniqueness, of course we have Daya Betty. Uh, Daya I thought did a great job. It was good. I enjoyed it. Again, all of these roles are very small. Kind of faded the background. But still I thought a really great job from Daya. For Nerf, of course we have um, Deja Sky. I thought Deja did great. I really, really enjoyed Deja's performance. I thought her... Stage presence was so strong. She did such a great job, in my opinion. I thought this was one of the best. Great job from Deja. When it comes to the talent being gorgeous, like gorgeous. Gorgeous definitely faded in the background. Again, I I expected so much from Gorgeous in the challenge because Gorgeous is ultimately a performer. However, Georgia did go on to say that she didn't really enjoy musicals very much, which honestly, like, can't relate. But, <laughs> that's the whole thing. Like I said, Georgia's kind of faded in the background. I don't know. I thought she was fine. <laughs> yeah, that's what I can really say about those four characters. When it comes to uh, Willow Pill as the Green Fairy, I thought she did great. 
I really, really, really loved Willow in this. One of the really, one of the strongest performances in my opinion, especially with the fact that like they didn't show up until like the very towards the very end. It took a while for Willow to show up, but I still think Willow stood out so well. And I think they did such a good job with the character development, all the above. And I really, really enjoyed Willow. Like, Willow, I thought, did great. When it comes to Lady Camden as the Lady Z, I love this. Lady Camden had so much presence in this role. Um, and just really made it her own. It was so good. So good. It was such a really, really phenomenal job from Lady Camden. Great job. And then, of course, we have Bosco. Bosco! As Saltine. Alright. Bosco wanted the biggest role, right? Which meant she needed to go huge with it. You need to really make the best of it all. And I agree with what Michelle said. It felt flat. It felt very flat. Which, again, if you are going to take the big role, you're going to stand out for all the wrong reasons if you're so flat. And I think that was the issue that Bosco really ran into. Again, like, I love Bosco. I just, I didn't love what they were doing with this role. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say. Like I said, Bosco really faded to the back for me. Again, let me know what you think down below, but those are my critiques. Alright, now we get to the runway. The category is Mirror, Mirror. We are going to go again in that same order for Charisma, of course, being Angie. I love this look. I thought this was gorgeous on her. I loved all the mirror pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. Honestly, this was one of my favorite looks of the night. I thought it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love Angie, and I thought this work. Cool. Work. Alright, for uniqueness. Again, that was uh, Diet Betty. I like this. I like this a lot. I like the mug. It was different for Diet, which I enjoyed, because Diet... Daya's mug is very signature to Daya, so it's kind of nice to see her change it up a little bit and do something pretty different. Um, so I enjoyed this look. I thought it was really cool, really, really sharp, as they said. Um, so I really enjoyed that from Daya. When it comes to Deja, at first, when I first saw this, honestly, I liked it. Yeah, I really liked it at first, because, again, maybe I haven't been the biggest fan of Deja Skies' runway, Deja Skies' runways, but I think this was one of her better ones. I don't know, hear me out here, like, I think this was one of Deja's better runways. Again, was it great? No. Was it bad, though? I, I don't know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Sorry, I enjoyed it. When it comes to, whoa. Next we got George's. Alright, for Georges, like, gorgeous. Um, I like this look. I really did. I loved all the pieces, little tiny pieces. Again, for a mirror category, I think it works really well when you have tiny little pieces of mirror all over. I thought that was really cool. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Next, we get Willow Pill. This was safe for me. It wasn't my favorite look from Willow. And again, I've loved so many Willow's looks. That, like, this one was n lower for me for Willow. But, still, not a bad look. It was safe. Um, when it comes to Lady Camden. The Lady Camden. I love this. I love all the, again, for Mirror Mirror category, I love all the little mirror pieces up on the headpiece and all the above. I thought that was really well done. Um, one of my favorite looks of the night. Yeah. Honestly, my favorite looks of the night were Angie and... Uh, Camden, and they both knocked it out of the park for me. Finally, we get Bosco. Bosco! This is the same look four weeks in a row. Bosco. Come on! And I'm so glad that Michelle called her out on it, because I love Bosco. Bosco is one of my favorite queens on the season, and to get this week after week, it's just... It upsets me sometimes, because I'm like, you need to really show versatility, you need to show that you can do th different things. Wait, that's the same thing, versatility. versatility. But you get my point, right? Like, again, it's the same look every week, so I'm kind of like, eh, eh. Alright, now we get to the dreaded question. Who should go home and why? Dun, dun, dun! They ask it every season. Alright. So when it comes to this question, essentially everyone says Bosco, except for Bosco. But everyone says Bosco. And then Georges is, well, no, Bosco says Georges. And I'm kind of like, 
I guess that's kind of who she's left with because otherwise it's just Bosco picking someone else for no real reason. So again, let me know who you would pick down below. When it comes to this week's challenge, I definitely would have said Bosco because both runway and in terms of performance, I think Bosco was a letdown this week, which again is really upsetting because I love Bosco. But it is what it is. Alright, so when it comes to the final placement, the winner this week is going to be Lady Camden. So huge congratulations to her. Um, great job. Great, great, great job. Love some Lady Camden. I thought this was great timing. Second win, again, I, I'm super excited for Camden and can't wait to see how far they can go. They're really making themselves a front runner and I'm super excited. So then the bottom two is going to be Georges and Bosco. Again, this writing was kind of on the wall for this, I feel like. <clears throat> um, which again, of course, means everyone else is safe. When it comes to this lip sync, Georges won it for me. It was very clearly Georges' win at once some points. I thought Georges was definitely focusing on the main vocals the entire time. And even with those side vocals, when uh, Georges still continued on with that, and then you had Bosco, who was kind of just doing more of the chorus. Which, again, not bad. But I think for a lip sync song, you need to know all those little details. So, that is what it is. In the end, RuPaul announces that George is safe. And Bosco has to reveal her chocolate bar. But, we have a twist, A. Eh? <laughs> Bosco has a gold bar. No one goes home. Seven more continue. Woo! Alright, knowing my home this week. Again, I still enjoyed this episode. I know I get annoyed. <laughs> I make this very public that I get annoyed when no one goes home. But, <laughs> honestly, I was happy that Bosco got to continue. Because I do love Bosco. And I do hope that they can continue on and do really great things on the show. So, that does bring the end of my review. Next week is going to be the roast of Ross Matthews, so that's going to be a lot of fun. But, um, let me know what you think about this episode down below. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Share it on social media. Hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sandwich Hour community. And also go ahead and do me a favor and follow me on other social medias. Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Sandwich Hour. And my DMs are open. I'll see y'all later. Have a good rest of your night. Bye!